The National Palace Museum welcomes your visit. To ensure the quality of your visit, please pay attention to the following things. Please stand in line quietly to collect your audio headset. You can adjust the volume of the audio headset. You will be able to hear clearly even if your tour guide speaks softly. Please return the audio headset to your tour guide or leader after your visit. Eating and removing shoes are forbidden. Backpacks and luggage are not allowed. Please store them in a locker storage area. Before entering the galleries, please mute your cell phone or switch to vibrate mode. Flash photography, tripods and selfie sticks are prohibited. Smoking outside of the designated smoking area is also prohibited. You are welcome to use the breastfeeding room and water dispenser provided on the B1 floor of the main building. The museum offers a variety of services and facilities. Please consult the guide map for more information. If there is a high volume of visitors, please wait patiently in line and respectfully follow the guidance of museum staff. Please remain quiet and keep the volume low in the galleries. You will have a meaningful experience if you appreciate the artifacts quietly. The National Palace Museum wishes you a pleasant visit. Why is it called the Maogongding Cauldron? What distinguishes the cauldron, with its simple appearance, from the other ornate and richly decorated bronzes? Inside of the cauldron's belly is cast with a 500 word long inscription, making it the bronze work with the longest inscription in the world. It relates a historical account from the Zhou period of restoration during the reign of King Xun. As a result, it is considered an important vessel of the state by historians. Many extant bronzes have inscriptions which record the important events of its time. The cauldron's inscription states, Upon ascending the throne, King Xun planned to invigorate the court administration and ask his uncle Mao Gong to aid him in governing the state. He bestowed important titles upon Mao Gong as an important figure in government and conferred rich rewards upon him. King Xun desired for Mao Gong to uphold a fair and diligent spirit of governance. He also ordered Mao Gong and his clan to assume the responsibility of guards to protect the emperor, for which Mao Gong was lavishly rewarded. Mao Gong grateful for King Xuan's expression of favor, subsequently had this large cauldron cast and the account of his glorious legacy inscribed inside to be passed on to future descendants. This inscription is not only an important record of historical documentation, but also a precious resource for understanding the history of the late Western Zhou period. The cauldron was excavated during the late Qing Dynasty in the Shaanxi region 
it traded hands numerous times and almost fell into the hands of the Japanese army during the Second Sino-Japanese War. It was eventually donated to the state by a collector. In a coincidental occurrence, it arrived in Taiwan with the Kuomintang government, building upon its legendary record. The bronze bell of Zhou is considered a musical bronze instrument, which was used as a ritual instrument during ceremonial offerings to the emperor's ancestral temple. It was capable of creating a solemn atmosphere in a ceremonial setting. Among all extant Western Zhou bronze instruments, which were mostly independently cast by dukes or princes under the king, it is extremely rare for one to be cast under orders from the king of Zhou. The bronze bell of Zhou in the MPM's collection was a treasured instrument cast by King Li of the Western Zhou. This type of bronze bell can produce two different musical notes when struck on the side or in the center of its lower half, giving it the name of Dual Note Bell. An inscription of around 120 has been cast on the surface of the bell, recounting the origins of the bronze bell of Zhou. At the time, King Li personally led his army on a crusade to invade the state of Pu, unexpectedly defeating 26 neighboring states as well. In order to thank his ancestors and deities for their divine protection, he had this bronze bell specially cast to record his great conquest and to place as an offering in the ancestral temple, in hopes that through the harmonious music of the bell, he may pray to his ancestors for the prosperity of his descendants and peace for the lands in his realm. The pond water vessel of San, also known as the San Pan, was excavated during the Kangxi reign of the Qing period passing through many collectors' hands before it was presented as a gift to the Jiaqing Emperor at the grand occasion of his 50th birthday. It became an important vessel of the Qing court. During ancient times, it was originally intended to be used as a ritual vessel for holding water, but this particular vessel was not made for such a practical purpose. Instead, it was created to record and serve as a reminder of a land dispute which occurred during the late Western Zhou period between two minor states. The plate has an inscription around 300 words long, and its contents roughly recount when the Zhe state invaded the San state with its military power. This attack resulted in an unexpected defeat. During negotiations between the two, the Zhe state agreed to give two units of land to the San as compensation. The ceded land was recorded in an illustrated map and a pledge was made to end future conflicts. The entire account was recorded on the Sanpan as evidence of the land contract between the two states. Jade is a precious stone. The most conservational use of the material in a way that complements the color or shape of the stone and produces a breathtaking work, not only requires skill, but also challenges the creative sensibility. As in the case of the jadeite cabbage, strictly speaking, while the material is not top quality, the craftsman cleverly chose the subject of a Chinese cabbage. He ingeniously used the distribution of color in the jade to carve out the green leaves and white body simultaneously masking the imperfections with the veins of the leaves and transforming the spots into traces of the leaves experiencing frost. There are even a locust and katydid perching visibly on the leaves at the top. The jadeite cabbage originally resided in the Yongha Palace of the Forbidden City, which also served as the residence of the Qing period Guangxu Emperor's concubine Lady Jean. It is speculated that it may have been part of Lady Jean's wedding dowry. 
the colors of the green leaves and white body of the cabbage symbolize purity and innocence, whereas the insects, which have strong reproductive abilities, represent many sons and grandsons, a wish of prosperity for the emperor's descendants. The placement of this work was once modified. In the Yongha Palace, the jadeite cabbage was originally planted in a small enamel flower pot, along with a bundle of spirit fungus. It was subsequently displayed on a wooden stand, not only emphasizing the artistry of the work, but also taking on the form familiar to visitors today. The Rue Kiln was established as an official kiln for firing porcelain during the late Northern Song period. It is known for the sky blue glaze. Generations of collectors have considered Rue ware the best of all Song porcelain wares. The majority of Rue wares have crackled patterning. Today, the only existing ware without such a patterning is the Narcissus Basin with Celadon glaze in the MPM collection. The period of production for Rueware was very short, spanning at most approximately 20 years of the late Northern Song period, making Rueware quite rare. The NPM has 21 precious pieces in its collection. This Narcissus Basin has been completely preserved. Its body is elegant and natural, and its surface is covered in a uniformly smooth sky blue glaze that emits a warm luster with a jade-like quality. It perfectly manifests the aesthetic beauty of the lauded celestial celadon. It also conforms to the tranquility likened by the connoisseurs from the five dynasties onward to that of blue skies after the clearing rain. The National Palace Museum welcomes your visit.